Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. You guys all right? Today I'm going to show you 10 most expensive synthesizers in the world. I'm talking about outstanding synthesizers, vintage or modern, that can actually be purchased today with a bit of luck and a whole lot of money. If there is any of my videos that you should watch from beginning to end, this is the one because you have no idea what's coming. Let's get going, shall we? Number 10, the Minimog. Although this is probably one of the most coveted monosims in the world, there is quite an abundance of Minimogs out on the market. The Minimog is notorious for its simplicity, solidity and fatness of sound. Three oscillators, the best sounding cutoff filter ever designed and a signature tone that we know and love since its first release in 1970. The cheapest vintage Minimoog that I could find is $7,500 on Reverb, otherwise most of them go for around $9,000. In my opinion, all the original Mog reissues sound just as good and they go for quite a bit less in the $6,000 region. However, if you have cash to spare and a taste for bling, then your choice must be the Mog Voyager 10th anniversary, which is covered in, yes you guessed it, 24 carats gold. And whether you're into gold or not, you have to at least admit one thing. This unit is particularly good at celebrating a sound that made such a mark in music history. Yes, provided you have 32K to spare. Next, number nine, the Yamaha DX1. This is a monumental synthesizer, the most expensive of the DX series, only built in a limited edition of 140 units. It's the only FM synthesizer of its kind with 73 fully weighted piano action, dynamic, aftertouch sensitive keys and as many as 32 voices. And look at it, this piece belongs in a design museum. I had a chance to play this beast some time ago when UVI, the kind sponsors of today's video, brought this unit to my old studio. No way, dude! And this one is huge. <laughs> Everything about this instrument is premium. Build quality, converters, presets, it's just an outstanding piece of tech. It's heavier than a fridge, but never mind. Now, if you have 9600 USD and a time machine, you can go back and buy this one before the listing ends. Otherwise, you can do like me and play the DX1 from UVI's Vintage Vault. Click the link in the description for UVI's Vintage Vault. Next! Number eight, Analog Solutions Colossus. Look at it. This is a fantastically complex analog modular synthesizer. It features, are you ready? 12 VCOs, 12 VCAs, eight filters, two ring modulators, two spring reverbs, two step sequencers, two touch plate controllers, VU meters, readouts, and twin broadcast quality Swiss made 31 by 31 pin matrix. <sighs> Dead Mouse loves it. Designed by synthesis pioneer Tom Carpenter, the Colossus is a supremely built instrument with an insane degree of sound architecture possibilities for an analog synthesizer. Manufacturing of this excellence comes at the fair price of 31,000 British pounds and change. It's not called Colossus for nothing, you know? Now you be colossal and hit that like! It really helps this channel. Thank you. Next! Number seven, the Voyetra 8. Released in 1982 by Octave Plateau. You're not listening to me, you're looking at this, aren't you? I know you're doing that. Birdie num num. Birdie num num. Released in 1982 by Octave Plateau Electronics, this was a pioneering analog synthesizer with eight independent voice cards, in-depth programming and modulation routing capabilities, thanks to its computer-like interface. It also had an onboard ring modulator, arpeggiator, and 1,700 notes sequencer. Remember, it's 1982 we're talking about here. This was a serious instrument, used by the likes of New Order, Depeche Mode, Trevor Horn, Eurythmics, and nobody else, I think. 
if you want to put your dirty little hands on one of these unobtainiums, here's a reverb listing for you. Just $51,000. It comes from Switzerland. However, some lucky synth head out there managed to pinch one for only five grand. Respect. I have my UVI plugin version of it, and here's how it sounds. Oh, next! Number six, EMS VCS-3. This iconic instrument was first introduced in 1979 by Electronic Music Studios in London. Unlike the massive modular systems of the time, the VCS-3 was encased in a small box which made it easy to carry around. With three oscillators, a unique routing matrix and a joystick, the VCS-3 was capable of endless sound manipulations. Famously used by Pink Floyd on the dark side of the moon, the VCS-3 had a few design variations over time. Nowadays it's really hard to put your hands on one of these units, and when you do, you really have to pay a premium price. I could not find anything below the 20 grand mark. Do you think these synthesizers are worth all this money? Please let me know in the comments down below. Next! Number 5. Schmidt 8 Voice. Handcrafted in Germany to the highest manufacturing standards, this enormous polyphonic synthesizer features a fully analog signal path with advanced digital control and a sound generation engine that includes everything subtractive synthesis has to offer, including multi-pulse width modulation and multi-ring modulation. It sports full MIDI implementation with USB ports and complete programmability. This ambitious machine is being built today and it proves that the dream of a super analog synthesizer is far from dead. I found this one on eBay for around 23,000 British pounds and apparently you can order one directly from the company's website for an undisclosed amount of money. Next! Number 4. The Roland Jupiter 8. Now this is one of the most recognizable synthesizers of the 80s. You have spotted this on countless music videos of the time, and it's arguably the hottest looking synthesizer ever designed. But the Jupiter 8 is not just a pretty face, you know. It could produce that deep, organic, assertive sound that was highly sought after in most genres of music production. With eight voices, two filters, and very versatile modulation options, this synthesizer was easy to use. Musicians loved it, producers loved it, Everyone loved it. I love it, but I don't have one. But I rented one some time ago and recreated Thriller with it. So how much does it go for? Let's check on eBay. Ugh. Ooh. Oh. Reverb.com maybe? Ouch. So it costs a lot of money. Next! Number three, Korg PS3200. Encased in a beautiful wooden cabinet and looking sexy as only some synthesizer can, the Korg PS3200 is the last of the PS series and it boasts a jaw-dropping 48 notes of full polyphony where each oscillator module has its own VCF and LFO. What? This semi-modular beast was produced between 1977 and 1981. And unlike many of its contemporaries, the 3200 was capable of storing up to 16 patches. Yeah! Despite its rarity, I was able to locate one on reverb for 22 grand USD. 
However, again, some lucky synth maniac, for whom I feel no jealousy whatsoever, was able to acquire one for only 10,000 USD. That would have been a good flip. What am I talking about? I'm not a synth trader. Fortunately, I can get some of that PS3200 Mojo with my UVI version of it. Don't forget to check out Vintage Vault 4, where you can find this and many other rare synthesizers. Click on the link in the description, give it a go. I have it, I use it all the time, and I love it. And thank you, UVI, for supporting my channel. Next! Number two, the MOG modular system. MOG have made several gigantic and very expensive synthesizers in their seven decades long history. In order, 1C, 2C, 3C, 1P, 2P, 3P, Emerson Moog Modular System, Model 10, Model 12, Model 15, System 35, and System 55. <sighs> These instruments are so special because they are the OGs, the ones who started the synthesizer revolution. They sounded so radically different that musicians lost their minds, and some of them went on to make some stunning pieces of art with them. Aside from their exceptional design, construction, and sound, these larger Moog synthesizers have a collectible value that makes them increasingly expensive as they age. Now, you could have bought yourself a nice Moog System 55 for only 30 grand, but you were late and the listing has ended, and you've also missed this one for 35k. But not to worry, Moog has the great habit of reissuing these beasts every now and then, like the 2014 Emerson Moog Modular System, and with a bit of luck, you can locate some of these reissues, like this Model 10. Personally, I always keep an eye on Mog's website for upcoming reissues. Next and last! Number one, the Yamaha CS80! Ladies and gents, here comes Daddy! Released in 1978, the CS80 is considered by many the greatest synthesizer of all time. It has eight voices with two oscillators per voice. It has weighted keys that respond to velocity and aftertouch. It has four hardwired patches that can be manually set on this panel. When you look inside the CS80, you realize the amount of work that it must have gone into building this mammoth of a synthesizer. But of course, what's really magical about this unit is the sound. A profound, creamy, timeless sound that shaped some of the most iconic compositions ever made, including Billie Jean, Africa, and Blade Runner. The CS80 is rarely found on sale. But when you do, you can expect to pay anything around the $50,000 region, arguably making this monumental piece of electronic engineering the most expensive synthesizer in the world. Boom! 